Hey, yo, what's good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of your favorite MMA sports betting channel, Bros Talk MMA. This is a special Quick Picks edition. I'm your host, Utica, undeniably the illest cat around, a.k.a. Mr. Make This Pick Real Quick. You're about to see how I do so in a second. I'm here with my bro host extraordinaire. You know who it is. It's Trichel Jordan. It's Ray Nasterio. It's Ray Bucks. Yes, sir. Here to do all the things. Let's get it. Yeah. All right, so uh, we're here to cover the UFC fight night card between Tai Tuivasa going up against Marcin Tabura. Uh, it's a 13-fight card, so we're going to start things off in the bantamweight division. We got Chad Elhinger going up against Charla Lampos uh, Gregorio. Uh, Al Hellinger is coming in at 12-7 and seven overall, and Gregorio is coming in at 8-3 and three overall. Um, I'm going to be going with Gregorio in this one. They're going to be making their UFC debut, but I believe that they got what it takes to take Al Hilliger out. Uh, they're the older fighter going up against the prospect. I'm going to be going with the prospect on this one. Who you got? I'm going with the prospect as well. We're going with Gregorio. Uh, I think he gets it done against uh, Chad for sure. Definitely. Moving on, we got... A strawweight bout between Corey McKenna going up against Jacqueline Amorim. Uh, McKenna's coming in at eight and two overall. Uh, Amorim coming in at seven and one overall. Uh, I'm gonna be going with McKenna on this one. I believe that they have decent enough hands and uh, ground game uh, combined with the good cardio to be able to outlast Amorim and probably win this one by decision. Yeah, I got to go with McKenna as well. She's had a uh, a one-year layoff, um, but I don't think uh, it wasn't something where she was pulling out of fights or anything of like that. She just guess she had a COVID and a couple of little viruses and things that, are, things that were going on with her. Uh, so I think she definitely wins this one uh, as well. All right. Moving forward, we got a lightweight bout between Tiago Moises going up against Mitch Ramirez. Um, I'm going to be going with Moises in this fight. Uh, they're 17-7 and seven overall. Ramirez is 8-1 and one overall. Ramirez is taking this fight on short notice. Um, I just believe that Tiago has decent enough hands and su- superior ground game that uh, they'll be able to probably end this fight early and or just dominate uh, on the ground. Who you got? We're going to go with Moises as well. Um I, I just believe that uh, he'll, he'll definitely get it done. Uh, he's a heavy favorite as far as topology is uh, concerned, um, as well as just being the favorite as far as the odds makers are concerned. So I guess I think he gets this one done against uh, Mitch Ramirez. Definitely. Moving on, we got a featherweight bout between Josh Kulabau going up against Danny Silva. Uh, Kulabau's coming in at 11-2-1. and one. With uh, Silva, they are 8-1. and one. I'm going to be going with Silva on this one. Just believe that they're the younger, just, you know, skilled enough fighter. I feel like they faced someone similar to Kulabau in their contender series fight to get them into the UFC. And I feel like this is going to be another test where this guy has definitely went up, you know, some uh, up against some stiffer competition. But uh, I think that Silva is ready to, you know, basically enter this division and start making the name for themselves. I got to agree with you as well. Um, he is our live dog. Um, I don't think he's a, he's not a, a, a heavy underdog, but uh, he is the dog in this uh, fight. But I don't see any reason why he can't get it done against Kula Bell. All right, moving forward, we got a flyweight bout between Ode Osborne going up against Jafel Philho. Uh, Ode Osborne coming in at 12 and 6 overall. Phil Ho coming in at 12, 15 and 3, it looks like. Or maybe 2. Uh, 3. Yep. 3. <laughs> I'm a little blind. Uh, looks like I'm going to have to get this prescription updated. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'm going to be going with Phil Ho in this one. I just believe that they're going to have the better ground game. And once again, just decent enough hands to hold their own. Uh, the longer this fight goes, it'll play into their hands. Who do you got? I got to feel. I got to go with Phil Ho as well. Uh, I think he gets it done against uh, Osborne. He is the favorite. Um, so that's, that's all I got. <laughs> there you go. 
All right, moving forward, we got a bantamweight bout in the women's division. We got Josiane Nunes going up against Chelsea Chandler. Um, you got Nunes coming in at 10 and 1 overall, Chandler coming in at 5 and 2. Um, I believe Chandler is going to win this fight. Uh, I believe they'll just have, you know, good ground game uh, and will be able to keep themselves from getting chinned by Nunes. Um, what do you got? I believe uh, Nunez is going to chin Chandler. <laughs> um, <laughs> my bad, my boy, but uh, that's kind of just how I feel. Um, she's she's ten and one. You know what I mean? She's uh, she's got a stellar record. Uh, I, I definitely got to go with Nunez on this one. Your best pick win. Absolutely. For sure. Moving forward, we got a lightweight bout between Mike Davis going up against Natan Levy. Uh, you got Davis coming in at ten and two overall. Levy coming in at eight and one overall. I just believe that Mike Davis is uh, the overall better athlete in this fight, and uh, will be able to hold their own whether it goes to the ground or on the feet, and or just be able to keep things from going to the ground to to keep it on the feet. Um. So yeah, I'm gonna be going with Davis in this fight. Who you got? I got Davis as well. Um. Definitely a favorite in this fight. Uh, don't see any reason why he can't get it done against Nathan Levy. For sure, for sure. So it looks like we're moving into the main card of the evening. Um, we got Gerald Mershart going up against Brian Barbareda in a middleweight bout. Mershart's coming in at 35 and 17 overall. And you got Barbarena coming in at 18 and 11. Um, I'm going to be going for Mershart in this fight. I just believe that even though they are somewhat a little chinny, I just don't believe that Barbarena is the kind of power puncher who's going to be able to connect, you know, square like that to put him out. Uh, They definitely are a point fighter and can lay on volume, and if this stays on the feet, it can start to play into their hands. But uh, I believe Mershart's going to take this to the ground, get the sub, Barbarina's got horrible fucking ground defense and game overall. So I'll be going with Mershart in this fight. I'll go with Mershart as well. Um, all the things you just said. Um, and I believe he just has uh, the higher fight IQ. Um, I think uh, they're pretty even as far as athletic ability, but uh, Mershart definitely has the higher fight IQ. For sure, for sure. Moving forward, we have a bantamweight bout in the women's division with uh, Penny Kienzad going up against Macy Chasson. Um, I'm going to be going with Chasson in this fight. She actually has a W over Kienzad uh, early on in their career, so I'm not going to say that that plays much of a part into this bout. But uh, I will say that uh, I just think that Macy took some well-needed time off, even though they were coming off of what I'm assuming was somewhat of a rib injury from their last fight with Irene Aldana. Uh, or maybe they did just get hit in the lip. Regardless, they took, uh, they took some time off. They're back. I think that it's going to be to their benefit. Uh, can possibly end this on the feet or the ground. But either way, they could also just win in a decision either way in my opinion um who do you got i got kinzot in this one um i think she's just gonna beat up uh macy's body uh and uh we'll definitely take the the w dub on this one all right uh moving oh, made the best pick win absolutely bro. Um, moving forward, we have a featherweight bout between Christian Rodriguez going up against Isaac Dolgarian. Um, Rodriguez coming in at 10-1 and one overall, and then you got Dolgarian coming in at 6-0. and oh. um, Rodriguez is moving up in weight. Uh, they usually fight at bantamweight, but are now fighting at featherweight. So uh, they were able to make weight successfully today. Uh, Dolgarian uh, fights at this weight. I believe is the stronger of the two athletes, but I'll be going with Rodriguez in this fight. I just think that they got better ground game in terms of just how they're able to maneuver. Uh, I think that Dolgarian is is very strong and kind of just brutes their way through their opponents on the ground. But um, 
they haven't made it out of the first round. So it isn't to say that they don't have cardio because they claim to uh, train for five rounds. So cardio could be there, but this is, you know, the real fight in the training room are always going to be different scenarios. I'm going with Rodriguez in this fight. Who do you got? Going with Dolgarian. Um, every single fight he's had has been in the first round. He's also won every single fight that he's had in the first round. Um, there is no blueprint to beat this man, so I don't see any reason why he doesn't take down uh, Christian Rodriguez. Um, so I definitely had to go with my man's uh, Dolgarian. All righty. Next up, we got a light heavyweight bout between Kennedy and Shechukwu going up against Ovin St. Preux. Uh, we got Ninsechiku coming in at 12 and 4 overall, and we got St. Preux coming in at 26 and 17. Long standing, uh, st- you know, pillar of the light heavyweight division. He's been around for a little while now. Um, about a nine year age gap between the two. I'm going to be going with Ninsechiku. Um, yeah, I just believe that they should be able to end this fight, but I can also see them just winning what will turn into somewhat of like a sloppy third round if they both stick around that long and go to decision. Um, but in those first two rounds, he's definitely live for a finish. Sure. I got to go with uh, Nechesku as well. Um, he's a not a heavy favorite. He's a huge favorite. Um also, in typology, huge favorite. Uh, so there's no reason why he doesn't take this one down. This is a no-brainer. Uh, I would just say let's move on from this one. Right on. Moving into the co-main event, we have a welterweight bout between Brian Battle going up against Angelusa. Um, Battle's coming in at 10-2 and two overall. Lusa coming in at 11-3. Um, I'm... I mean, I went back and forth on this one. I was Lusa uh, in the beginning, but then just kind of had to redirect to battle. Um, I just believe that if this fight turns into either a ground affair or a, uh, you know, a decision, um, that's what's going to play into battle's favor. I think he's built to take fights in that direction uh feel like they he trains to take fights into deep water as opposed if he if the finish is there definitely he's going to take it but i think he uh thrives in the deep water so uh i'll be going with battle in this fight who do you got i'm gonna go with lusa uh i might be in my feelings on this one because i bet against him his last fight against uh mckay i believe Oh, let's see. With Usa. Yeah, it was uh, Reese McKee. Reese McKee. McKay yeah. McKee. Um, so he had a really high fight IQ in that uh, battle. Um, ah, anyway. Um, so I do believe that uh, he can beat Brian Battle. Like I said, high fight IQ. Um I hate to lose with somebody twice, so I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely go with Lusa on this one. All right, all right. Moving into the main event, we got a heavyweight bout between Tai Tuivasa going up against Marcin Tabura. Uh, Tuivasa is 15 and six overall. Uh, Tabura coming in at 24 and eight. Um, I'm gonna be going with Tabura in this fight. At first, I was definitely on the uh, Tuivasa train. Until I found out earlier today that he's actually only six weeks or so removed from meniscus surgery. So uh, I'm not sure how well that knee is going to hold up in this fight. Especially given Tabura having somewhat of like a grinding type style where he doesn't mind taking this over five rounds. And I just don't know how that leg is going to hold up over five rounds given leg kicks or any type of takedown attempts. Um, yeah, I mean, Tuivas is always going to be live for a knockout, but is he even going to be able to, you know, get the power, you know, and be able to drive on that, on that, uh, you know, drive through his punches with that knee? Um, not sure. So, uh, I'm going to have to play it safe on this one and go with Tabura, even though they are the, the dog in this fight and are the older fighter. Um, I just feel like their technique 
with the news of the injury, you know, not too far from, you know, this fight, I'm going to have to go with Tabura. I got to go with Tabura as well. Uh, a couple a couple notes that obviously he said um, he just came off of a meniscus injury. Um, that's an eight-week recovery. Uh, I've had friends who have had that same um, uh, injury. You mean 18? Uh-huh. Right? 18 weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said eight. Just, just said oh, eight. my bad. Yeah. 18 weeks. Um, he's six weeks out. So um, my man's was in a boot for 18 weeks with that injury. Um, and a good portion of that was on crutches. So I, I salute him for being able to come back so fast. Yeah, I don't even know how he's really been able to train. Exactly. Um, and so there's a lot of issues with that, right? Like, can you plant that foot the way you want to to get the power you need to out of uh, your punches? Uh, can you plant that foot to get the power out of it that you need for your kicks? Um, can you plant that foot for takedowns? Um, is the first time somebody taps at taps at a knee, are you going to be able to uh, to, to weather the storm? Um, those are all too many uh, question marks for me. That's why I don't like it. Um, so I definitely got to go with Ty Burra. He is the underdog in this particular fight. Uh, so I think there's going to be great value there. Also, Tua Vasa has a huge following. Not a huge following, but a huge... Um, uh, tapology possibility for the win. Like they believe in him, they think uh, Tui Voss is going to take this one down. I'm going against tapology. I don't do it super often, but every now and again, I think I, I'm the better picker for sure. So I think another thing to take into account is the fact that he was open about this injury. Mm-hmm. Like he wasn't keeping it a secret. So Tabura has to be putting this into his game plan. Attacking that knee has to be in his game plan. Absolutely. Uh, Even if it sportsmanship-wise may or may not be in, you know, great taste, but, hey, we signed on the dotted line. This is a fight game, you know, so. Absolutely. That's what it is, you know. I I have to go with Tabura. I mean, I guess maybe my heart's going with Tuivasa. But uh, my heart isn't paying my bills right now, except for just keeping me alive to make bets and uh, go to work. There you go, my uh, boy. (laughs) Yeah, we'll be going with Tabura. That wraps our quick picks portion of this uh, episode. Um, Real quick, you know, just make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, share the channel. Uh, Right now, we are about... 30 or so subscribers away from being able to do live streams on this channel. So, you know, let's go ahead and uh, get that uh, subscriber number up. Um, We appreciate everybody who has been rocking with us. Uh, Apologies for the late release. We just had some things going on this week, but we're always going to make it a point to get y'all something. So uh, once again, this has been an episode of uh, a quick picks episode of Bros Talk MMA. I'm your host, Utica, undeniably the illest cat around, a.k.a. Mr. Just Made These Picks Real Quick. Mm. I'm here with my bro host extraordinaire. I can't even uh, can't even let you just pass to me like that. I got to tell you, um, I think. I think you might have been the parlay guy last week. Hey, Did that happen for you? Hey, I believe that happened for you. I hit my I four. I hit mean? my four. You know, we you called it four, all right? Yeah, I hit my four pick parlay. You know, I, we could have went for the spicy five if Vera, you know, actually came to play. You know, but uh, shouts out to O'Malley putting on the master class. But uh, hey, I feel good. You know, I'll take that four. I'll take that four picker. I believe you, you know, you got in on that four pick. Right, even though- so I did the four, five, six, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I believe in my in my dogs are like original shit. And you know what I mean? Sometimes, you know what I mean? You got to, when you're going spicy, you're getting spicy, you're getting extra, you know what I mean? You got to just like get your base, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So, so, you know, you know what I mean? Par- salute par- to par- us. Par- par- parlay God. Like, yeah, you know I'm what I mean? Par- throw- I'll, I'm the parlay prophet. This is the parlay God. I'm the parlay prophet. All right? So... Like I said, once again, this has been another episode of Bros Talk MMA, Quicks Picks, 
uh, special edition. Uh, until the next one, we out. <laughs>